guys, Long Haul Larry, and we are in the ADL shop, and I'm going to show you guys a little trick that I learned a long time ago from a, kind of like a master mechanic guy. Um, your charge air cooler, it is up front here. It is that square, big square, silver kind of radiator looking thing in front of the radiator, and then the condenser mounts onto that. What happens is sometimes they develop leaks. And say one of these hoses could get a hole in it, could get a leak. The charge air cooler itself, it's aluminum, and something could wear on it, it could get a leak. The hoses on the other side and stuff can get a leak, whatever. When that happens and you press on the gas, <clears throat> well, the pedal, it's a diesel. When you press on it, what happens is your turbo spools up and it pressurizes that the charge air cooler and it forces air and forces it into the turbo and that's what gives you your power. Well, if you have a leak, it's not going to give you all your power. Your fuel mileage is going to drop and a sure sign of it is going to be you're going to hear a whistling noise. When you press on the pedal, you're going to hear this little this, this whistling noise thing going on. Um, they do make a kit that you can get that you can uh, actually test all your connections and everything and the charge air cooler to make sure it doesn't have any leaks or anything in it. But I had this one guy show me one time we were going through some of the trucks and he's like, you guys got to be testing these things. And I said, well, my boss doesn't have that kit, you know, doesn't have a tester and stuff like that. He goes, you can make one. You can make one out of PVC piping. And he goes, I, he goes, that's what we use in our shop. One guy just made one up, and he says, we use one instead of buying the kit. So I'm going to show you guys how to make one of those. You can make this at home. Probably $25, $30. You can make this uh, kit yourself. And then um, you'll be able to test your truck or whatever once in a, you know, once a year or so. You put it, put it on there, put a little pressure in it, and make sure it doesn't have any leaks, and you'll be good to go. So what you're going to need is you're going to need some connectors. Um... These are three inch PVC connectors and the outside of diameter of this is the inside diameter of that rubber hose. Okay? So you're going to need, um, so these are three inch connectors. You're going to need a pipe, a three inch pipe because you're going to need to cut a little piece that you're going to glue inside here. You just need a little tiny chunk. This is the smallest piece I could find out here. Um, it's like it's four foot or whatever. So you're going to need two connectors because you're going to make one for each side. You've got to pressurize the whole system. So you need two of these connectors. You're going to need two end caps. The only end caps I could find out here in the stores I have available. Are guys, the parts out here are just... I'm used to Wisconsin having a Menards and a Fleet Farm. Fleet Farm has a lot of stuff that is not out here. But I'm doing the best I can out here. Uh, running around, parts guy, mechanic, everything else. And you're going to need two caps that are going to go over the top of this pipe. Um, and then you need a PVC glue, which I have. This is the place else. I forgot to grab it. But then you're going to need yourself a gauge. Um, this was quite an expensive gauge for what I'm doing here, but it's the, the one I found. Um, all you really need is a gauge that goes up to like 20 PSI. You really don't need much more than that. You're only going to put maybe 10 to 15 PSI in this. And then you're just going to put it into it and let it sit for a little while. And if the needle don't move, you don't have any leaks. But you need um, some kind of gauge. And um, you need to have some kind of threading on here. And what you're going to do is you're going to drill a hole in here just a little bit smaller. And you're actually going to heat this up a little bit. And you're going to thread it into there. So that on one of the end caps, it's going to have a gauge. And then on the inside, you need some kind of nut or something that's going to go up alongside here, and you can silicone it and everything else. Um, this is just a coupler that is the same thread as quarter, you know, NPT, and it'll thread on the inside. I'll put silicone in. It has a, it's hollow all the way through, so you can get the air pressure into it. And then you're going to need some kind of valve stem. Um, he does not have any valve stems here yet and stuff. He doesn't have any tire stuff. I would have rather preferred to get a metal, metal, uh, uh, even a truck one would have worked. But I was able to find this one at, I think it was an AutoZone, and it is a metal one. It's made by Slime. 
and it's kind of more for like ATVs and stuff like that, vehicles, but it's actually metal and it's threaded and it has a nut on there with these rubber washers. And I will have a gauge on here that will stick off here. And then I will also drill a hole in here and have one of these in here so that I can hook an airline onto it and, push, push, and put some air into the charge air cooler to pressurize it. So I'm just gonna cut off a couple chunks of this pipe, glue it all together, and then um, make these up caps and um, then we'll be able to pressurize the, the system, the charge air cooler. So I've measured a depth in there and I need an inch and a half and an inch and a half of pipe will stick into the coupler and the cap will take two inches. So I'm just going around the pipe and just making a line. We'll just try, and try to get this somewhat straight. I don't have a, a sawzall, that would be what I'd prefer to do this. Give me some kind of guidelines here. Get it the straightaway the best we can. So, I'm in there. Go. Cap on there. There we go. So we're gonna let this dry. Do the same thing the other one. Actually, gonna be putting glue on here. It's, uh, gel super glue stuff.
go. And I'm just going to put a bead of it all the way around it. There we go. You can see it down inside there. It's just screwed up against here. Got silicone on it just to make sure it stays in there. It's all glued in there. Now you got a pressure gauge on her. Now we just got to mount our fitting for your air truck here. Clean off all the stuff I've been smearing on her. Alright, there you go. See, it's got the air inlet, it's got the gauge hookup. So now we'll go over there and I'll show you what you do. So now all I do is just when you take this off, you just slide this up in there. You put the clamp back on here that you know was holding it on to the turbo intake right here. And then on the other side, on the other side you have this cap, and there's a hose just like this on the other side of the air intake or air charge air cooler. And what you'll do is put that hose, same thing, you put it around here, put the clamp on here, and that seals off the other side. You need to take your air compressor hose, and you just, and you just fill this up, usually 10, 15 PSI. And then just let her sit, and check back on her about 15 minutes later or so. If the needle hasn't moved, got no leaks. It's a good way to check. Keeps your fuel mileage up on your truck, and it also delivers more power to your engine when you step on the gas your turbo spools up it needs that pressure to build to force the air into the turbo to make it actually perform the way it's doing if you got a leak someplace it's not going to do that so there you go a little homemade tester you can do that i got one of these in my house made up many many years ago <laughs> every year when i would do a kind of like a once you do your real maintenance on my truck and everything i'd always check and check it out and I would find these hoses here would sometimes crack or get a slit in them or something like that. And you could hear them whistling and stuff. And, and I'd replace these hoses a lot of times. Uh, charge air cooler. I never had to do one on my truck. On the old Mack trucks I used to work on. There was a couple that were had developed uh, holes in it. And we actually had to replace the charge air coolers. So there you go. Cheap little uh, tool just to check uh, your charge air cooler pressure. So I got that hooked on there. You guys can see how I did that. I pulled it off. Just tighten the clamp around there. And then over on this side, I have the same thing. I have this side capped off with the other end. Same thing. Clamp on there. And by the way, guys, when you guys pull these apart, you see all this corrosion in here? Never put this back together with this corrosion. Never. Never, never. This will cause a leak. Always clean out the inside of these pipes, inside of these rubber pipes, clean them out, and then take some sandpaper and clean all this up. You need to clean this all. This has to be a good surface for this hose to grip on because that's, you know, there's a lot of pressure going through. The turbo really cranks on that thing. So I thought I'd show you guys how this worked because we've already used this once already today and found a tur uh, charge air cooler junk. All right. So we can see what we got there. And all we do is just Put an airline to it. We have a leak. Right here. We have a leak right here in this hose. I'm going to go listen around to it.
Okay, so for me to try to get this back apart, I am going to try to... It's right here where this hose goes up here. Hose mounts on there. There is a serious leak. So what I'm going to do is put some uh, PB Blaster on this and soak this for a while. And I'm going to tear this apart. And I'm going to clean the surfaces all back up and everything. And then I'm going to seal it back up. But this clamp, I, everybody's place is closed. These two clamps are junk. I want to see if I can get this apart and not wreck this clamp. So, I'm going to work on that. See the black stallion out there? Thing blows black smoke. And the boss has had it with many mechanics and everything else. They've done injectors. They've done all kinds of engine work on it. And I've been telling the first thing you check is always their charge air cooler. I mean, if you got smoke like that, loss of power, you check the charge air cooler, see if there's leaks. And there was another a mobile mechanic that was here today. He called it a mobile because he said I'd have to work on this and then that. And I'm like, dude, it's never gonna happen. I'll never get to it. So he called in this other guy that he uses once in a while. And it's the guy that actually plays the injectors, I think. And um thought that that was smoking. And um I had this little tool I made this morning and I showed it to the boss and he goes, Well, I'm gonna have him check that one out there. And so he went out there and and then he was like, how do you hook this up? And I showed him how to hook it up. We put air to it. There's a huge hole in the, in the charge air cooler. So we have to actually rip the charge air cooler out of that truck. And it's in the back of the pickup truck. And the boss will, uh, roll, it will uh, go get a new one. And then that'll have to be reinstalled. So $30 little tool. Just pr maybe, I'm hoping, but maybe just solve the problem with that truck smoking so bad. So there you go guys, um, what, maybe 25 bucks, maybe $30, this whole thing cost me, this gauge is a little bit expensive, um, it's the only one I can find, but um, yeah, I mean, 30 bucks let's say, and there you got yourself a really cool tool, I know it sells for a whole bunch more than that, if you buy one of these things, and it works just as good, it's basically the exact same thing, except some company makes them, you know, they're probably, you know, I think they're probably made out of aluminum and all this stuff, but these things work just fine. So we're going to be using these later. Um, we're going to be checking uh, the pressure on one of the gaskets on a different truck. That's why I wanted to make these up this morning to let the glue and silicone all dry and everything. So when we use it, we're ready to go. So there you go. So I hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day, great night. When you are watching this here video, if you're not, well, so let me just try that all over again tomorrow. I gotta get the coveralls on. I'm starting to get dirty and stuff. I gotta start crawling around on this truck. Uh, paint is, is getting there. It's still just a little tacky. And then I'll start uh, pulling all the paper off of here and stuff. But it's getting there. See you later.